Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the third edition of the Sustainability Network. I am Shruti Harihara Subramanian, and I am the founder of GodiSudaStore.com. This week, too, we are going to meet some really exciting brands and their founders. And uh, coincidentally, they all seem to be women. So it's going to be an all girls club this week, and I'm really excited to meet all of them. Today we will be meeting the founder of Adeya Farms. Her name is Roli and Adeya Farms makes really nice and sturdy palm leaf plates and bowls and many such things. I'll let Roli talk about it more. But both uh, those of you who are new to Sustainability Network, let me quickly tell you what we are up to here. Uh, we have been meeting the founders and the brands that Goli Soda has been associated with for these many years and uh, we are getting to know them better, find out more about their values, um, their ethics, their sourcing, their products, what the founders believe with regards to sustainability or being eco-friendly so that uh, you will can finally make the right choice when you want to pick up something sustain uh, sustainable. So. Um, before I invite uh, Roli for this talk, I would also like to remind you that uh, we are open to questions. So feel free to uh, ask us uh, anything with regards to sustainability, being eco-friendly, anything with regards to uh, palm leaf plates or any such things. I'm sure Roli would be happy to answer your questions. Um, meanwhile, uh, so somebody is saying, Oh, women who can take care of our nature. Oh, okay, yes, I'm a woman, very much a woman. Niharika, yes, I am the founder of Goli Soda, in case you didn't know. Uh, so for those of you who would like to see our earlier episodes, we are on IGTV, we are on Goli Soda's YouTube page, and we are also now on podcasts, on most of the popular stations on podcasts, so catches anywhere and uh, we'll be there and we are hoping to bring more other different kind of uh, other stuff on the sustainability network add a little spice and make it even more interesting so we are really looking forward to your feedback uh, on what you would like to know more and things like that and we'll be happy to incorporate this and make it an even more interesting series so let me first uh, invite Roli Hi, Roli. Hi, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Doing well. So nice to finally meet you after being associated for so long. I think this is this uh, series is giving me the opportunity to actually meet the founders behind the many brands that we are associated with. Yeah, thank you so much for you know, having me here. And, uh, and this is the first time we are doing it. So I'm sorry, I was a little bit you know, fumbling around with which button to press. So we are here. here. No problem. I think uh, all our viewers will understand. I think uh, it also happened before. Technology, you can't really trust. So, uh, welcome to the show. And I love your brand. Uh, uh, we uh, always talk with uh, Adia Plates at home uh, in case of emergencies or last minute parties. We have always talked with Adia at home. And uh, as I tell people, um, I am the first user of any product that comes into Goli Soda. So yours as well. So uh, thank you so much for a wonderful brand. So let us uh, start from the beginning. So how did uh, Adeya happen? And what is the journey? How did you one fine day decide you'll get into this? Uh, well, it so happened that uh, for you, uh, I was having export in, uh, in my previous uh, assignment and uh, it was with the bank. <laughs> so after that, uh, you know, uh, me and my uh, husband, we decided that we would like to export something of ourselves. And there are so many wonderful products of India, which can be taken to various countries and look. And uh, we thought of ourselves as very good marketers. So we thought, you know, maybe we should take it up and, uh, you know, show the world that you know, what all good products India has and, you know, what is that we have to offer the whole world. So that's where it began. And then we started looking for various products and then we realized that uh, uh, there is this, uh, you know, uh, uh, there is this product, a uh, palm product, which has been in use in India for like centuries together. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Harsha was my partner and my husband. Uh, so in his village, uh, usually people, when a child is born, they will first put, uh, 
the child or family play a yes. auspicious thing and then you know then the journey of the child begins from there so it's, it's a beautiful and my mother told me in kerala they also do that too nowadays you have these bath tubs for newborn but uh, there they actually put the babies on these palm leaf uh, dry palm yes. leaves to bathe them yes so it's a sort of new thing that it has been in practice for uh, centuries and uh, uh, you know somewhere uh, now it has a um, fashion and you know people are liking it and it's uh, it's it's, a, it's been sturdy it's a leaf but it's very sturdy it gives protection to the fruit when it is on the tree and then uh, once the fruit is ripened uh, the function of the for the leaf gets uh, kind of you know, done with and then it falls off. so it's a beautiful i mean we're not plucking any uh, leaf out of the uh, out of the tree we are not uh, destroying any tree or uh, we are not uh, harming the uh, you know uh, our earth in any other way it's basically it's just a leaf which has been uh, done to this function and it has fallen on the ground and we you know pick it up we clean it with water we just steam press it and you know, you know there you have it so it's a very simple product it's it's a there is no chemical uh, there is no uh, uh, you know uh, hardener or something we add it's just the way it is it's just leaf which is strong enough to hold your food so yeah there it is no so it's so, truly it's sustainable because some people think oh we have paper cups and paper plates that eco friendly because it's not plastic or styrofoam but something like what uh, you're having these palm leaf plates are actually truly sustainable because uh the source uh, is from the tree to, uh, and the leaves where its function is done so technically it's the waste of the tree it would have probably yes. decomposed anyway nature would have taken it anyway but you're giving it one more life before that happens so i think it's a yes. beautiful process and truly sustainable uh, more than any other um, biodegradable option uh, available in the market so uh, i think it's an amazing product and uh, i'm sure they were uh, initially when you so which year did uh, you start adila khan we set up our factory in 2015 we started okay. off you know first buying and selling in 2014 uh, that went off for a few months and then we realized that if we really want to reach our export market and we we require a bulk products then we were we can uh, i mean we were our facility to supply so you cannot tell uh, because a lot of people were involved in the manufacturing of the plate as such they were small vendors and uh, they had limited capacity and hygiene was a issue and uh, quantity you know, when you want it suddenly the client asks you buy it all and then self supply was not uh, yes. reliably uh, possible then so then we started up our own facility in bhadravati which is in karnataka and uh, that was in 2015 <laughs> so from there it has been uh, this is learning every day and now it's 5 years since we have been running this factory and it's a wonderful journey a lot of learning for both of us so it has been great action so congratulations on that uh, where is the factory based out of uh, it's in a place called bhadravati uh, it's a small uh, town <laughs> and it's kind of you know semi village town where in uh, a lot of our uh, workers who come and work in the factory come from these uh, small villages mostly women because they are the breadwinners so they uh, small uh, you know if you travel to the i mean if you try to understand the economy of small villages it's basically these women so this is in karnataka is it yes the uh, factory is in karnataka because most uh, the maximum quantity of leaf is found in karnataka okay and especially in this small uh, you know kind of location where you have a lot of rain and uh, you have these uh, beautiful trees which are you know I wish you had shared so many things, and which is enough for us to sustain our business properly. So, uh, is the the farms uh, where you source these trees very close to the factory? Because I'm asking this because when we talk about sustainability, we have also have to look into carbon footprints and things like that. So, yeah. uh, so they're all close by uh, the farms to the factory, or uh, in and around, or you source from multiple places. Um, It's very close by. Uh, mostly we source it around around twenty to thirty kilometers range. So okay. there are around three hundred farmers who are associated with our company who will be bringing in their uh, leaves, uh, you know, in like tractors or uh, you know small uh, trucks, and uh, that's what we get during the summer season. That's when the deep collection happens. So it's it's all uh, 
it's all around in a small uh, country that uh, you know you have so many trees which is able to service um, our requirements of people. So we are not getting it from far. And what I also like about it, all these women who come and work in our factory are uh, from the small uh, villages nearby. So they are sustaining their family. That's how it is. So whatever uh, you know, we uh, we kind of you know earn and give uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, like you know sustain uh, their services. It's basically going into educating their children. So. No, so, that's the other thing we talk about sustainability is providing sustainable employment, especially in the rural areas, because uh, if you're keeping people in their natural habitat or their environment, that's truly sustainable. So that's the yes. other amazing thing about your product that you're providing rural employment and um, keeping them in their own space. I think, yes. especially now when we're talking about migrant workers and people who have to uh, leave their homes to find work elsewhere, uh, providing work in the rural environment, in their space, providing uh, income to farmers. I think all that together is also truly sustainable. So again, kudos to Adya uh, for that. So um, uh, are there, uh, so you said mostly summer you get these leaves. So, uh, yes. so the rest of the year, uh, you don't get the leaves at all, or in, it's scanty, or uh, how how is your production process through the year? So what happens once the rain start? It's uh, the in that area is called Mal Malnad actually. So it, it's it's like uh, you know, a lot of rain. It's a area of a lot of rain actually. So once the rain starts, it doesn't stop there. It's it's like continuous rain for uh, three four months together. Wow. So the leaves do fall during this period also, but it kind of you know kind of gets muddy with the mud. Which is low and then there will be some, uh, you know, uh, it's not usable. But practically, we require a little bit dry leaves uh, to at least come to the factory where we can dry them further so that we can use them to mold. But if once the rain starts, I mean, that supply kind of stops actually. <laughs> so we need to stack the leaves completely during summer. So for four months, five months, we do not get any supply of raw material. So that is but the production continues. continues. The production continues. I mean, we run it for, uh, for I mean, around the year. But uh, we need a lot of those sort of stacking. So there's a lot of work around summertime. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, extra workforce we require during summertime so that we can dry the leaves. It's, it's, it's very beautiful. It's basically sun dry. So the leaves are spread on the large area of ground and it's all golden leaves. You know, it's, it's a very beautiful uh, sight to see. Actually. So it will dry up and then you, can, you put the leaves together and then start it with one big ball to be used. So the power of the leaf is it, nothing happens to it. Right? You know, once you dry it, you can store it for some uh, like you know, days together and use it as and when you require it. Nothing happens for you. It's such a beautiful it's, it's, I mean, creation of God actually. Right now. So that would, as you say, I can picture the whole uh, scene in my head. And it's just so beautiful about how the products that we're using say at a party has so much connected to nature and the seasons. Uh, you know, most other normal products that you get in the market, Seasons are never uh, taken into consideration. Maximum your rice and your dal, and even probably nowadays fruits are coming off season nowadays. They do things like I remember when I was a child, summer means watermelon, but now I'm seeing it through the years. But uh, when you talk about seasons and uh, drying it in the sun, it's like truly connected to nature, and that's such a kind of product we are using. So uh, yeah. living in cities, and when we are using something like that, that's the only closest way that we can get to the future. And uh, again, uh, I'm I'm very glad that your product is uh, so close to nature, which very few products are. So, uh, so um, the other thing. So when you started off, I'm sure uh, uh, entrepreneur to entrepreneur, I'm sure uh, there would have been a lot of hurdles uh, uh, in the business or. In uh, making people understand your product, or even maybe the manufacturers, the people in the village to understand what they're doing. So, uh, what were the kind of hurdles that uh, you were facing during the initial years, and how did you overcome it? I think the first major hurdle that we faced was uh, to get the farmers to, you know, because they were into this anika business. They, they use the fruits, they sell the fruits to convince them to actually. Uh, you know, these leaves which are anyways like uh, you know, falling and uh, they were basically burning these leaves actually. So there's not much of use that they had, they, you know, uh, they burn it for uh, house fire or whatever, you know. but uh, to convince 
one thing to actually uh, pull it together, bring it to the factory was the most uh, difficult challenge uh, that we had faced in our baking years because we required to for any uh, uh, you know any business to run, you require continuous raw material support. Then yeah. only you can plan your production. Then you can plan your order. If without a proper raw material support, it's very difficult to plan forward actually. So that was the most uh, difficult uh, thing. Um, we got very good workers uh, to start off with, so that was never a problem. I mean, people are nice, dedicated. They want to work. They want to make something of their life. So, uh, as manpower, there was not much of a problem that we faced in our beginning years. Um, from the client side, uh, they were uh, because a lot of them were seeing this product for the first time. Okay. So when we approached them, they didn't really know what the palm leaf plates are. You know, I had not seen a palm leaf plate in my life before we started off with this. Okay. So, yeah. So, so I just knew, though it has been in use in our country for a very long time, but it was kind of new to market products. So to explain it to uh, the customer, to uh, you know, tell them that because often it is called a wooden plate. So I tell it's not wooden; it's just a leaf. It's just leaf is very hard, but you can just use it and throw it out. So and the other very you know, interesting challenge was that uh, nobody wants to throw these plates away. They, they, they're very really, um, surprised. You know, why do you have to throw it? Can you just wash and use it? Again? You know, actually, sometimes I have that when, well, especially the smaller ones where we just put these dry snacks on to serve. I I actually just uh, rinse it off and uh, keep it out to dry completely. It's as good as new. So uh, yeah. it's uh, as so it's amazing. You you can rarely do that to any other uh, disposable plates or cups. But yeah. this is so sturdy that I I was able to do reuse some of the things uh, if it was not too. Uh, uh, dirty. So. It's not. If it's not like soapy and very fluidy, it, you can definitely use it again. Actually, but we we cannot as a manufacturer, I cannot advise you to do it. But uh, nothing really much happens to the product. Actually, it's, it's so tough, and that's how the nature has made it. Because you know, uh, I mean, our logo says that we take clean, but we just put uh, water and heat, nothing else. So that is how it is actually. There is there is absolutely nothing else. It's just the leaf which has got folded. So we just form it into various tableware. Otherwise, it's just leaf. So we can very well, you know, at home we can just wash a leaf in each. So yeah. that's how it is. There's nothing more to it than that. So, so uh, you were saying it's water, leaf, and heat. Uh, how much water is used in the process in terms of uh, clean? And I think even I recommend that uh, trees farm don't need as much water even to farm. Is it true? Or no, they require water. They require okay. water. They, they grow only in the areas which is very abundant. Okay. Actually. So they do require water. But as but you said, uh, there is three, four months of monsoon in that area, so it's yes, like yes, natural. Yes. But so what about is, the terms of production, uh, in terms of cleaning and manufacturing? How uh, yes. how much is the water consumption? Because again, many of our followers would like to know uh, about yes. that. Because they want to know about. So that. since the uh, leaf. Falls on the farm. When it comes to the uh, our factory, we kind of sun dry it, and then we store it, and then we use it. So there is, uh, you know, mud on the leaf, like any leaf. So there is mud. So the mud has to be washed off, and it has to be washed off very neatly so that it can be put forward to the production area. So for washing the leaf, we require water, and uh, uh, primarily it is done in the big tankers where the water is recycled and used throughout the day. So you know the water goes out, and again because it's just mud, it's just the physical uh, uh, you know impurity as you say. Yeah. So physical particles you need to just remove, and again the water can be reused. So it is like a cycle which goes on, and uh, uh, so that is the only usage of water which is there in uh, in the production uh, floor actually. After that, once it comes to the production, you have uh, like slightly soaked leaf so that it is little malleable. And then it comes to the pressing, uh, uh, pressing process, and then you just uh, cut it off. With heat, you try to mold it in whatever form you want, whether you want a square or you want a round or you want a hole, which is slightly deeper. So you just mold it, and then uh, then that's about it. And then we just like pack it and check it, uh, do quality checking, pack it. So that's all it is. So um, I understand uh, um, it, it's completely about the mold, um, but. Uh, you you might have not seen. Uh, you said only after 
starting this business you started being uh, more of these palm leaf plates but there right now there are to be honest a lot more other brands coming in yes. but i yes. personally know there is a difference between yours and the other brands but i like you to say how how is uh, are they are special uh, why uh, how is it different from the other plates that you see in the market i know the answer but i'll wait for you <laughs> Uh, I took out from a client actually. I put them on my mantle rather than you know, me selling. But uh, when I held the leaf for the first time in my hand, you know, that was after we had already purchased the machine. We were supposed to actually you know start punching out plates. So when I held the leaf for the first time, I was scared that who would be going to make uh, plates out of it because it's such a tough metal craft. It is very tough. It's, it's like really like wood when you put that leaf in your hand. But I guess uh, how we are different from anyone. Else is because we are very okay. We are very careful about hygiene, and we the plate and the entire production is handled on the production floor. So absolutely, at the once the leaf is cleaned, uh, we make sure the leaf is cleaned very well because there is sampling which happens. You know, if there is any part of the leaf, uh, you know, there is a proper uh, uh, feedback process which goes on on the uh, leaf cleaning area. Once the leaf is uh, Entering into the production area, absolutely, it would be. Uh, I mean, it has to be in the plates all the time. Uh, and then once the plate is there, it has to go back into the plate. We pack our plates almost on the same day or next day. You know, if okay. there is a board uh, production on that day, next day definitely we pack it. So we do not leave our plates open at all. Uh, we have a very strong quality you know, because so many plates are going abroad, and there is so much of uh, you know penalty. <laughs> So we are very careful about these things, and we have done also mistakes. You know, we have done mistakes here and there, and uh, you know, people have come back with like you know, uh, certain things were not packed well, and all those things have happened with us. But uh, in last five years of operating, I have never had a serious customer complain that you know, you know, I cannot. I mean, your plates are not good, and I cannot do business with you. That is not something uh, you know. We have heard. We would have heard that you know, you have uh, sent the shipment late, but. Uh, They have got this right down, so that has been um, that has been. Uh, I think that is a difference, I guess. So just the way we handle it, that's the only difference. Actually. But my. Uh... my reason for having your products in your store um, as i said i'm always particular about the kind of products i use first and then i keep it in the store and uh, also i we are very very particular about aesthetics and uh, the, the 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 practical usage of the products and from my experience of your product i find them extremely sturdy compared to most other uh palm leaf plates i've seen in the market uh a lot more thicker a lot especially with our indian food it can get really soggy at the end of a meal and things like that which never happens with your plates uh, plates or any of your uh, uh, products and the other uh, interesting thing that i find about your plates are they are very uh, classy in the sense that if you're throwing a party you're not just keeping some very obvious okay these are just disposable eat and go even if you want to have a nice uh, setup or a, a nice uh, dinner uh, the kind of designs that come i mean more like shapes and the quality that comes out of it i think it, it must be because of the 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 the, the what do you say the molds that you do uh, so whether it's your square plates or the bowl or the oval ones these are quite unique which i have not seen uh, in other palm leaf uh, tableware so so it's a very nice way to even feel your guests welcome and not just feel like okay i don't have to do the dishes at the end of the party but <laughs> it's still a nice way of uh, presenting your food or feeling your guests welcome and uh, i feel that's the reason Adia stands out from the other uh, brands, or, uh, or some of them are not. They don't even have brands. They are available in the market otherwise. So that is my reason. And of course, you've now added the hygiene part of it. So uh, I know you have a diverse uh, range of products. Why don't you just quickly uh, tell to uh, our viewers who are not quite familiar with them? So. Uh, yeah. And also take from what you said in the previous, you know, beautifully you said. Thank you so much for enlightening our products. So one thing which uh, which was very clear when we had set off for starting this, that 
even the way that we used to tell the you know manufacturers were doing it, it was just like uh, um, how would I put it? It's, it's uh, in any product you can add a little bit more uh, beauty. You know, we wanted to sell a beautiful product. I think probably that is why when I get a family, I get here and okay, fine. You know, probably somewhere we have been uh, you know, able to achieve what we had begun with. So uh, we always wanted to see a beautiful thing. Actually, uh, my other director, Harsh, he is very, very particular about uh, you know, having something that the client really likes. So we didn't want to just do any other thing, actually. So that's why we have so many different forms that we have created. With. And uh, we're very flexible because, see, market condition changes, uh, you know, on a very regular basis. So we need to also keep adapting to it. So as and when the clients ask, you know, can you make this for us? We have always tried to accommodate that. And we have also in process learned uh, 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 to uh, understand clients' requirement with it. So we have now the whole range from plates to uh, boats. Uh, soup boats is something that we sell the most. Uh, then we have uh, you know, rectangular shoes, trays, and all that. What we are now, uh, things, how it has changed after this you know, COVID period where people are looking for, uh, you know, uh, single use, uh, a single, uh, uh, you know, serving kind of products where they really want trays and the packed, uh, packed stuff. So they want to just pick up the uh, dabba and go. So we have started with uh, those also. Too. So as the market changes, you need to continue to change. Then only we will be uh, surviving the you know, various market conditions. So we have always tried to change along with it. And that's the reason we have such a huge range of products. Uh, we, I think uh, if I'm right, we have around uh, 58 to 60 different shapes right now. Really. Wow. And uh, we are very happy to, you know, service a client if they want something new product or new shape. Uh, if they are launching something, they want something very different. We are very happy to them, actually. So we have also uh, kind of, you know, grown along with our clients. So that's that's where it is for so many different shapes, actually. And then yeah. you see so many different uh, unique shapes, <laughs> which you like. So, no, I remember because uh, I think uh, Satyam Cinemas used to serve your plates and yeah. the minute you saw that, you knew it was Adhya because the quality mm -hmm. itself spoke uh, that these are <laughs> from your brand. So that yeah. that's a great thing and that's what we believe in Goli Soda as well that we might be sustainable, we might be eco-friendly but when we have our products at our store, we should um, find an excuse to be mediocre. We should... Uh, be as competent as any other products available in the market, sustainable or non-sustainable. Because our uh, belief is that we want to tell people that uh, having a sustainable life is uh, it's not a major lifestyle change. You can still be cool. You can still have the same kind of functions uh, that uh, you could do with other kind of products. So I think Adya speaks for that. So what does Adya mean anyway? Am I even pronouncing it correctly? Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, yeah. That's it's basically about herbs first. So, okay. Um, basically, nature came first before all of us. So, so the company is based on nature product. We wanted to sell, uh, I mean, that was a vision of the company when we had started out. That we want to make beautiful Indian indigenous products with the world. So, so that's where it comes from. Oh, it's so a beautiful name. Very, very beautiful name and so uh, apt uh, for uh, a sustainable mm -hmm. product that you know. So I think... So, uh, I mean, is also very oil, which is like sun actually. So, yeah. so like, you know, uh, we put nature before us is how uh, the company works actually. I think that uh, name itself sort of defines uh, the value of your company, uh, the, the beliefs that you have. Uh, and I think anybody who wants to be sustainable, I think the first thought is to put nature at first because mm -hmm. we, uh, we, it's so easy to put ourselves first, but uh, to put nature first is, I think, the best way to go about uh, leading a sustainable life. So um, before I wrap up this whole thing, there's a, a typical question that I ask all our guests, and uh, that's... Uh, uh, this whole period of lockdown, uh, semi-lockdown, post-lockdown and all sorts of things. Now it's almost four or five months of this. Uh, almost half a year has just gone by. <laughs> so uh, I think it's been a period for everybody to go through some sort of 
uh, internal dialogue, transition, uh, personally and professionally. All of us are kind of reworking the way we work, uh, run our companies, or even our daily uh, schedules have changed, um, or the way we think about life or sustainability. In fact, uh, one of the reasons that we are doing this series is that if anybody is now, uh, I think they have the time now being at home to uh, think about being sustainable or make that switch. And uh, this is actually a good time for most of them to do that. So that's why we are having these kind of conversations so that uh, it can probably inspire somebody somewhere and uh, <laughs> make the world a better place. So, uh, so I just wanted to ask your journey through this period, personally and professionally. Uh, personally for you, professionally, how have your team kind of uh, adapted to this situation? What are your future plans? Because this is how things are going to be for some time. So uh, what's in your mind right now? So when we started off, uh, it was our summer season, which is the only season to be connected. And uh, we knew that the uh, planes are going to start. Uh, it starts about 15 this May in uh, Bhadravati. So we are supposed to collect the leaves very late. In a hurry, actually. So that was a very big challenge to collect the leaves when there was lockdown. So we requested all our vendors to please store the leaves for us at whatever footage is there. <laughs> so we asked uh, our common friends to just spread it up and then, you know, feed, keep it dry. Store it for us, and moment the lockdown will open, we guarantee you will get it for you. So they did it for us, and uh, you know, I mean, a lot of gratitude uh, to them for doing it for us, believing us that we'll buy. Because you know, though we are working for last uh, four five years for them, but everybody has a cash crunch in this uh, this period. So, but they did it for us, and we were able to pick it up uh, as soon as the lockdown opened. Thankfully, the Karnataka lockdown opened much earlier actually. So we started working on twenty fourth of April. Uh, we also had to start working because uh, so many livelihood depends on yes. the factory work today. So, so many children, uh, sheeps, and all is supposed to go in the salaries of these mothers who come and work with us actually. So, uh, 24 April we started off slowly. I mean, there's a lot of fear, but slowly everybody kind of you know, uh, came along and they also wanted. We have to spread the ship so that you don't know, have any uh, crowding and anybody yes. point of time. With all the basic uh, measures like temperatures, masks. What I you know, really admire uh, is everybody wears masks now. And this is, uh, this is even in Chennai where we do nothing. Uh, everybody wears masks. It is so hot in Chennai. And, uh, but nobody complains. They wear masks and they, and they go back home healthy. So uh, I think you know, all the entire team has uh, responded that they have understood. And, you know, education or not education, if you explain them that they just understand. And they are much more disciplined than any one of us. They may not like to cover our face at times when we're going out, but they are very particular because they stay in these small quarters and they have higher risk because there's so much of, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, not so educated people around. So, but they are so careful. So, uh, and that has been a great learning. Uh, you know, Indians, uh, my people can wear masks. <laughs> they can keep sanitizing their hand every hour. I mean, they are very particular. If the temperature is high, we said people have to. So, everybody has uh, come along as a team. So, that has been quite fun. And that was the only reason that because all of our customers are new and they started working much before us. And they said that, uh, uh, you know, we want the products now. And we were able to service them eventually around me to start selling the products there. Only because these ladies and uh, you know they can come and work and keep their uh, themselves safe also. So it has been a good round. We have almost worked all throughout, apart from one month. We have uh, done both the premises, both Chennai and Kashyavati uh, has continuously run. So uh, it's, it's only because my team was able to adapt to this new normal. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we kind of. Uh, but at the same time, we also understand that things are tough. The orders are not coming through as much as it was coming initially. So we need to be very, very productive now. And our expense has to come down. Yes. So if I need to keep so many people, I need to ensure that production has to grow. And, you know, because we cannot increase the rate of the plane at this particular point of time. Yeah. We really want the clients to use it and they use it well. So for that, I need to increase my productivity. The production has become very, very, um, and they have done very well in last because everybody knows this crisis and, you know, we have been able to push the code changes which we were not able to push through uh, initially. So, uh, without too much of change investing, we have been able
able to make a lot of process changes which are related to very good productivity, which is helping us to keep everybody employed and service our customers as well. So it has been a very dirty actually <laughs> last three months. Very, very inspiring. Very inspiring to hear that. And pretty much, I think uh, we've been fortunate at Koli Soda with a very hardworking team. They all have come together at uh, uh, probably the lowest point for all of us. And they've stood by each other, not just us, but each other and worked like a family. So um, that's why we were also able to sustain and even uh, support because um, uh, so, like for many of us who are so used to eco-friendly products as our essentials, uh, I'm sure many of our clients were also there and we wanted to ensure that our customers were still getting their, uh, you know, eco-friendly essentials, sustainable essentials. And we couldn't have done it without our team as well. And uh, similarly, even we had to work on our processes and, you know, uh, make sure we are the most efficient during this uh, period. So it's been a great learning process for us too, and we are continuing to learn as well. So uh, thank you so much, Roli. Uh, this conversation has been very, very interesting and exciting. I'm actually very, very eager to see the place where these uh, farms are. The, the way you sound uh, have described it, it sounds so beautiful and we would really love to, if once we can start traveling, would love to come see the place and the farms. Mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. So uh, that was Roli. Uh, as you can see, that uh, it's not uh, just it's just not about the palm leaf, uh, the plates, and the tableware. There's so much about it that makes it sustainable. The fact that the leaves are not wanted by the plants; they dry and they fall down and that they're using to make plates, uh, the water efficiency, the carbon footprint, the rural employment they provide. Uh, I think it's an amazing brand and we all must uh, support uh, them. And uh, this is a good time if anybody wants to cut down on their dishwashing for one day, I think we should all pick up uh, their plate and being natural, uh, they will ultimately compost. So if you're composting at home, uh, I would say just cut them into bits and put them into your compost pile. They will eventually compost. So it's truly sustainable. And as the name says, Adia, nature comes first. So, um, Please uh, support uh, Adia and uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, session of the Sustainability Network and tomorrow we'll be back with yet another exciting brand and their founder. So for those of you who missed it, let me remind you once again that we are available on Goli Soda's IGTV. Uh, we are on Goli Soda's YouTube page and we are now on podcast on most of the popular podcast uh, stations. So do, you do follow the Sustainability Net Network to give us your comments and feedback. We love to improve. We love to get you more interesting and exciting uh, conversations to the series. Thank you very much for watching the Sustainability Network. I'm Shruti Hariyar Subramanian. I'm the founder of GoliSodaStore.com. Bye-bye. Have a good night.